Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Bomba Calabrese. That's right, you know a condiment's going to be spicy when they actually put the word bomb right in the name. And above and beyond its vibrant appearance and incredibly addictive taste, what I find so fascinating about this Calabrian chili spread is just how little information is available about this on the internet. Which, by the way, is great for me, because no one's going to know whether this is authentic or not. But anyway, speaking of authentic, let's go ahead and get started with the one ingredient I do know we should have. Some hot cherry peppers. And to be honest, I'm not sure if these are exactly like the Calabrian cherry peppers, but this is what they had at the market, and they were quite spicy. And worked very nicely, paired with some sweet bell pepper, as well as a few habanero for some extra heat. So that's what I'm going with, but literally any combination of hot and or sweet peppers will work. And we will come back to those, but for now let's get started with the other ingredients which will include a few mushrooms that we've quartered. And we'll add that to our food processor, because all this is going to get chopped fine before it hits the pan. And then besides the mushrooms, as you can see, I'm going to cut up half an onion and toss that in, which brings us to our last major non-pepper ingredient, one small eggplant. And to prep that, we'll trim the ends and peel off the skin. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and cut that up into some smaller pieces. And of course, we'll add that to our onions and mushrooms. And what I like to do is get these three ingredients going first. And then while these are sauteing, we can work on our peppers. So once that's set, we'll go ahead and take it over and process this by pulsing it on and off until we have a fairly finely chopped but not liquefied mixture, which is kind of hard to describe, but pretty easy to look at. So that's what we're shooting for right there. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that into a pan that we've drizzled a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And if you're wondering why I didn't just do this on the stove, besides better light, spills are always easier to clean up on a surface like this than it is if we spill it on our stove. So just a little tip I learned from Chef Murphy. And then once that's transferred in, we will also add a large pinch of salt. And then head to the stove where we're going to place this on medium-high heat. And what we're going to do is cook this mixture stirring for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, or until our onions go from raw and harsh to sort of soft and sweet. And normally we say cook them until they're translucent, but since they're so small, it's kind of hard to tell. And if everything's gone according to plan, when you're done, your mixture should probably look something like this. And once that's set, we can go ahead and add our peppers, which I recommend you prepping while this mixture's cooking, just to save time. And speaking of saving time, every time I work with peppers, I get emails of why I'm not wearing gloves. Well, that's because it takes forever to stretch them over my large, sweaty fingers. So the glove on my left hand took about 10 minutes. And then as you can see, I lost patience with the glove on my right. But anyway, these are hot, so gloves are not a bad idea. And all we need to do here is cut these in half and pull out the seed pod. And that's going to take care of the vast majority of seeds. And the rest of those loose ones we could just shake off. And please do not discard the top we cut off, because that stem will pull right out. And we get that little extra ring of pepper. But anyway, that is my preferred method. And I went ahead and did those to the rest of the cherry peppers, as well as my bell peppers and habaneros just at a different scale. And then once our peppers have been prepped, our peppers can be processed, pretty much the same way as our first batch of veggies, by pulsing on and off until they're pretty finely chopped, but not liquefied. All right, we don't wanna puree these. So those are looking just about perfect, if I do say so myself. And we'll go ahead and carefully transfer that into our eggplant, onion, and mushroom mixture. And then besides adding the peppers, we're also gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And by little, I mean about a half cup. And we'll go ahead and stir all that together. And by the way, I'm going to say we're still on medium-high heat, but it's going to be up to you to adjust between medium-high and medium, depending on what you're seeing in the pan. As we like to say, that's just you cooking. And then what we'll do once that's all stirred in, and we're waiting for it to come back to temperature, is add in a few more ingredients, including a little bit of fennel seed that I like to crush with the flat of a knife before adding. And then we're also going to toss in a nice big pinch of dry oregano, as well as another nice big pinch of salt. And we are probably gonna need more than that, but we'll wanna do our final salt adjustments at the end of the recipe. And then all we're gonna to have to do to finish this is to continue cooking, stirring occasionally, for about 20 to 30 minutes, or until we think our peppers have cooked long enough. And how we're gonna tell is by the texture. Okay, basically we wanna keep cooking this until all those little tiny pieces of pepper are tender. So we're gonna to have to keep testing with a spoon to figure out when we reach that point which for me was right here, and that ended up taking about 25 minutes. But your time may vary, so the exact number of minutes will be up to you. You are, after all, the Jay-Z of your Bomba Calabrese. 
And then once we've determined our mixture is cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat. And we'll add the last official ingredient, some white wine vinegar. Plus, if it looks like it needs it, a little more olive oil. And we will stir that in. And that is pretty much it. We'll simply let that cool down to room temp, at which point I like to transfer that into a mixing bowl to do my final seasoning adjustments. And it's almost certainly going to need some salt, as well as I determined another splash of vinegar. And then what about a little more olive oil? Sure, why not? And we'll give that one last stir and taste. And that's it. Assuming it's tasting exactly like we want, your Bomba Calabrese is ready for your face. So we'll go ahead and transfer that into something slightly more presentable. And while I'm probably going to spend most of the blog post telling you what this is good on, or in, or with, just plain as is on a slice of bread is probably my favorite. And that, my friends, is one incredible bite of food. It's sort of bittersweet, and very spicy but not painfully so. And thanks to our mushrooms and eggplant, very, very savory. So I really do enjoy it as is. Although a close second would be dressing up any and all sandwiches. For example, this turkey loaf. And why you ask, am I eating turkey loaf? I'd rather not say. But anyway, the point is this takes any sandwich, no matter how boring, and elevates it to places you did not know it could go. But anyway, that's it. My take on Bamba Calabrese. As I mentioned in the intro, considering how beautiful this is and absolutely addictively delicious, it's kind of shocking it's not more popular. But after this video goes viral, with your help of course, that all should change. So I really do hope you give this a try soon, Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.